Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think we'll get started. Thanks for joining us. My name is John Holland, Chief Development Officer of Pynchon, and I'll be moderating this webinar today. Could we go to the next slide, please, uh, Andrew? Okay, so our webinar today, being conducted by Pynchon in partnership with Fortis BC, is Energy Efficiency Incentives, Programs for Buildings. Um, as we're all aware, there is uh, pressure on all of us to run our buildings more energy and GHG efficiently and do our part for the overall GHG and carbon reduction economy. So we're delighted to have um, three speakers today as part of this panel. And this, uh, this series is a session that we put on periodically as part of our practice innovation session uh, seminars where we bring topical issues to our clients in the hope that we can educate our client community with the lessons we're learning from our work in the industry, in this case, our mechanical engineering group. You've all done many um, uh, Zoom webinars over the years, I'm sure. So basically get comfortable, make sure you can hear, maybe put your hand up to either physically or um, the, the raise hand control on, on Zoom to uh, show us you're, you're hearing us. Please use the chat if you're having technical issues, we'll try to respond to that. Please do use the Q&A for any technical questions which we'll try and present to our presenters as the webinar goes through or more likely at the end. We're delighted to have three uh, excellent presenters today uh, going in order of uh, presentation. The first speaker is Andrew Burns, who is a mechanical engineer and a renewable energy lead at Pynchon. He's got 12 years experience in energy audits, design and operation of mechanical systems for multifamily residential, commercial and institutional facilities. And he's worked with clients across Canada to reduce their greenhouse gas consumption, GHG emissions, through heat recovery, energy efficiency, and renewable energy system design. Thank you, Andrew. And we have two present presenters from um, Fortis, both BJ Mayer and Kevin Garcher, who are um, collectively energy solution manager, custom energy efficiency program specialist, and uh, Kevin, they're both custom energy program specialists, both at Fortis and both have many years experience in efficient energy efficiency programs uh, from a point of view of the regulator and keen to tell us about the inducements they will give to uh, our client community and building owners to help make their energy system more efficient and more effectively carbon, carbon minimized. Uh, in uh, lieu of a um, honorarium uh, or payment for this session, both BJ and Kevin have kindly offered to make a charitable donation, which we'll do on their behalf at the end of this session. And uh, with that, thanks to all of you for participating in this series. We want to use this as a, as a platform to give back to our community. If any of you have any um, suggestions you'd like to give to uh, present more of these sessions going forward, please send them to me or uh, the uh, info at pinchin.com website address, and we'll try and accommodate that. With that, I will hand over to Andrew and look forward to this presentation. Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks very much, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we're talking about uh, incentive programs um, and rebates that are available from both Fortis and Clean BC for building energy efficiency projects. Um, <clears throat> as you probably are aware, buildings are one of the largest contributors to carbon emissions in Canada, behind uh, oil and gas exploration and uh, transportation. Uh, in Vancouver alone, buildings uh, represent about 60% of emissions. And they're one of the easiest uh, um, end uses and emissions uh, sources to uh, decarbonize. Uh, within buildings, uh, space heating, of course, and water heating are the two largest emissions uh, uh, factors. Uh, and those are the ones that uh, I like specializing in. I like looking at ways to reduce the amount of uh, carbon emissions associated with building heating, with water heating, through energy conservation and um, electrification strategies. You know, there's a lot of opportunities in buildings that often go overlooked, uh, especially the larger and more complicated buildings are the ones I love the most because they have the most uh, interesting uh, op opportunities for uh, energy saving strategies. Um, we like to think of just smarter design, smart design and smart operation of buildings as a way to improve their efficiency. Uh, here's a few examples, you know, most buildings will have cooling systems, uh, cooling tower is a great uh, uh, for providing heat rejection in the summertime, but often, you know, cooling towers will run year round at a building when there's a year year round cooling load and making sure that we uh, look at those as opportunity for heat recovery. Uh, building ventilation is becoming more and more important. Uh, 
following the pandemic. So increased ventilation levels lead to increased levels of heating required. So looking at ways to ventilate buildings smarter with heat recovery um, and also finding sources of, of waste heat within buildings that can be used to uh, help reduce their carbon emissions. These are all opportunities that uh, are more in investigation as we, we try and look at ways to operate and design buildings as efficiently as possible. We're going to talk today about a couple of the uh, custom incentive programs. And as you're probably aware, there's a wide variety of, custom, of incentive programs available uh, from prescriptive rebates where like you buy a boiler, you get a rebate from Fortis. Uh, BJ and Kevin from Fortis are going to talk a bit about those later. But the focus of today's session is on the custom incentives. So uh, looking at a building and figuring out what kind of energy savings could we achieve there through a different kind of design. Um, and then looking at developing a custom incentive that is uh, specific to a project uh, around a particular building. So there's two pathways. Uh, CleanBC has a custom program. CleanBC is really about fuel switching. So converting from gas uh, onto heat pumps. Um, that's things like air source heat pumps, geo exchange heat pumps, wastewater heat recovery. These are all um, energy um, conservation measures that can be funded under the CleanBC program. And Fortis has their own custom program as well. It's different from the Clean BC program. Fortis's program is focused on natural gas savings. So projects that conserve natural gas, like high efficiency equipment upgrades, uh, optimizing controls for buildings to reduce the natural gas use, reduce idling energy. Heat recovery chillers are uh, funded under the Fortis program. Heat recovery chiller, of course, being kind of like a heat pump, uh, but does energy recovery from chilled water systems into heating water systems. Those are eligible under the Fortis program and envelope upgrades, of course, as well. Uh, envelope upgrades reduce heating loads, reduce gas use, and are eligible under the Fortis custom program. So how do these custom programs work? It's a little bit more uh, complicated than some of the prescriptive things, of course, uh, but there's really three stages to the program. The first is the identification stage. And I think most of you who are here on this call today are here because you're looking for strategies around identification of, of potential um, um, uh, energy conservation projects under these programs. So the first step is really identification. And I'll share a few strategies as of where to look. It's an owner discussion, a discussion with an engineer, a uh, discussion with building operators, how much energy is being used by this building and what kind of uh, potential do we have? What kind of things would we wanna look at? And so you go from having that initial discussion and identifying some potential options. And the first step is to make an application then to Fortis or Clean BC. And there's a workbook that you can be, can be filled out uh, by the owner, uh, by an engineer, work with your key account managers, whether that's with Fortis or with BC Hydro, to complete the application um, based on what you might want to study. The next step is to complete an energy study. So this is where you would um, retain a consultant from uh, either the Fortis, Fortis BC approved consultant list or a Clean BC approved consultant list. And the consultant will then do an energy study, looking at these potential measures in more detail. Uh, an energy study includes a few valuable things. It includes a baseline energy profile for your building. So if, if all else fails, at least you have a really good study that shows you what the baseline energy profile is and where your energy um, use and cost is going. Then an energy study includes development of energy conservation measures. So it could be one or two conservation measures, could be 10 conservation measures. What kind of um, opportunities are there in the building that should be developed? Uh, costing them out, determining the payback, uh, energy savings uh, from the energy conservation measures. Another part of the study is a cost estimate. So how much will it cost to implement uh, said measures? And finally, recommendations, working with the building owner, the consultant and the building owner team come up with a recommended bundle of things that they want to implement and can present to either the Clean BC or to uh, Fortis uh, for funding. And the last step in the process, of course, is to design and build the measure. So um, once you've determined the ideal package of energy conservation measures, getting the detailed design done, getting it implemented, um, and, and uh, closing out the, uh, the process. So it is a bit of work with a, with a custom uh, incentive 
Um, and so there is kind of a qualification threshold, uh, generally looking for larger projects with potential to save a significant amount of greenhouse gas emissions or natural gas. <clears throat> so under the Clean BC program, uh, you have to save uh, 80 tons of CO2 emissions per year through the, through the measure. They also have a custom light program that's got a qualification threshold of only 34 tons of CO2 per year. Uh, for this program, you want to be saving 1,000 gigajoules of natural gas per year to qualify for the custom program or for those uh, buildings within BC or within Fortis's electricity service territory, we're looking to save 50,000 kilowatt hours of electricity per year. So you may wonder like, well, what, is, what does that mean? Like, how do I have to, what, is, what would a thousand gigajoules of savings look like? And I've, I've put together a few rough examples here to give a ballpark. Um, you know, things like controls optimization for starters, potentially maybe save 10%. Of course, this is plus or minus, right? So to be saving a thousand gigajoules a year with a controls optimization project, you'd have to be a building that spends around $100,000 a year on gas or roughly, you know, 40,000 um, meter square building size. If we did a boiler upgrade along with the controls upgrade, maybe the savings could be 25%, which is more significant. And so a smaller building would be able to qualify under the custom program. Um, maybe someone who spends around $40,000 a year in natural gas or a 15,000 square meter kind of size building. Heat recovery chillers as well uh, offer pretty good potential savings. So in that $40,000 uh, annual gas bill would be a, a qualification threshold. Of course, these are not set in stone. These are just approximations based on trying to target that expected savings. Some other options presented here, you know, heat recovery ventilators are good and, and vary, of course. Uh, refrigeration heat recovery is a great source of uh, renewable energy and can be used for uh, offsetting building heating loads that can potentially save up to 50% of a building's energy use. So it could be quite a small building or development, uh, say a development with a grocery store uh, that could use refrigeration heat recovery. Uh, it doesn't have to be a very big development to save a large amount of um, natural gas. And then similarly, uh, boiler to heat pump conversions or rooftop unit uh, replacement with electrified heat pump versions. Those can save upwards of 80 or 95% of, uh, of a building's um, natural gas. And so under the Clean BC program, those kind of projects are eligible for fairly small buildings, you know, 4,000 uh, meters squared for a rooftop project, or maybe 15,000 meters squared where you're converting a boiler to a heat pump. So what does the program provide for me? Uh, two things. The, there's the energy study is funded through a custom program as the, as the first step, and then capital funding for the actual project. So an energy study, as I mentioned, includes the energy use analysis, performance review, uh, determining conservation measures and developing a business case for each of those. Clean BC will fund 50% of the cost of an energy study, up to $20,000. And Fortis will fund uh, up to 100% 100% of the energy study cost up to $50,000. And then capital funding uh, is provided based on the amount of savings that can be achieved through the ECMs. So under the Clean BC, it's in the range of 40 to $60 per ton. And with the Fortis program, the funding is available in the range of $3 per gigajoule. And of course, those funding thresholds are, are subject to some other uh, criteria around paybacks, incremental cost, but this is generally the guideline of, uh, of of where funding can be provided. So with that, I'll uh, pass it over to Kevin at Fortis now, uh, who will talk a little bit more about Fortis's uh, energy landscape and the incentives available from them. Thank you, Andrew. Hi, my name is Kevin. I'm one of the energy solutions managers in the Lower Mainline. I help companies and people with energy efficiency incentives and help lower greenhouse gas emissions by signing up for renewable natural gas. Today, I will talk to you about the current energy tr transition in BC and Fortis and BC's approach to emissions reductions. Also, BG will be touching a little bit more in depth about our commercial rebate and our incentive programs. First, a little bit about Fortis BC. We believe that our 1.2 million customers should have energy choice. 
and that energy choice gives customers greater control in their attempts to achieve affordability, sustainability, and reliability. Now very key to understanding the rest of the presentation is that we are a delivery company. We do not earn revenue on what flows through our pipes. This makes it easier for us compared to other utility companies to switch from traditional gas to renewable gases and hydrogen. Our four, we have, sorry about that. We have four pillars in our clean growth pathway. I'll be talking uh, briefly about the first two, which is energy efficiency and renewable gas. We are currently in an energy transition, and the first step is to use that energy more efficiently, both in existing and in new construction buildings. That is why Ford SPC is looking to invest $155 million in energy efficiency projects this year alone, which is Canada's most extensive and largest program offering. And one of these programs that BD will be touching upon may be a fit for one of your projects. So what is renewable gas and how is it made? Renewable gas can include things like biomethane and hydrogen. So first, what is biomethane? Or more importantly, where does it come from? This comes from your garbage, your compost, waste from food and restaurant industry, and even compost from your homes and farming industry, as well as lumber industry. So how does it work? So any organic material eventually starts to break down and decompose as that organic material from restaurants or landfills or the compost from your homes decomposes, it releases methane to the atmosphere. The waste from our homes and major sectors of our economy decompose releasing raw methane to the atmosphere that could be 20 to 100 times more potent as a global warming molecule than converting it into gas and injecting it back into our pipelines. Rather than letting raw methane go into the atmosphere, our renewable gas programs capture that methane and convert it into renewable gas so that it can be injected back into our pipelines. Our program itself has roots in farms and agriculture. And the city of Abbotsford, whose Fraser Valley biogas plants is one of our first biogas facilities. So that is why you often see pictures of cows when we talk about renewable gas, though we also have and are investing in projects with renewable gas such as sources from food waste, landfills, and wood waste. Ford SBC believes in a diversified approach to decarbonization, an approach that utilizes numerous energy sources and technologies in order to reach the province's climate action goals. One of these energy sources is renewable gases, such as biomethane and hydrogen. I will now pass it on to BJ to dive a little bit deeper into our incentive programs. Awesome, much appreciated Kevin for that great overview of Fortis BC and our role in BC's energy transition. So I'm going to be speaking today about the incentive programs that are available mainly for commercial buildings at Fortis BC. We also have incentives available for residential customers and industrial customers. So if you do fall in those sectors, uh, please make sure to investigate those incentive programs. So I love Fortis PC incentive programs because they allow our customers to be heroes internally. Imagine you can go uh, to your project manager or your team and say, I can get 75% of a capital upgrade covered by utility, and we're going to save a bunch of money in our utility costs. Uh, it allows our customers to save big in the upfront cost of the materials, but also in the long run as well. So hopefully after I present some of the programs we have, it sparks an interest and you're able to take an action and find a project within one of your buildings. So I'm mainly gonna be focused today on our custom design program as Andrew mentioned. It really allows our customers to look at a building holistically and not just look at individual items, but to look at the building as a whole and really identify energy solutions that work. As Andrew already mentioned, there's all sorts of opportunities for energy conservation measures, including building envelope, chillers, optimization, all sorts of different opportunities. And within our custom program, it really allows us to work with you to explore lots of different options. 
As Andrew already mentioned, there is some project uh, eligibility for our program, uh, but our consultants can help you work through those different elements. So our custom efficiency program incentives are based into three different buckets. So we have energy study, site, uh, study incentives, we have an implementation bonus, and then we have implementation incentives. So I'm going to briefly talk about each one, but I really encourage you to visit our website uh, to dive in to get more information about incentives available. So our energy study and implementation bonus. So for this BC, assuming you make uh, or meet the project eligibility, you're looking at energy conservation measures that contribute to natural gas savings. Fortis BC will cover 75% of that energy study cost. So that's 37,500 for commercial buildings. So it allows you to really work on different elements throughout your building and identify energy conservation measures. And then assuming you implement just one of those measures that you identify through the Fortis BC process, we will cover the additional portion of that energy study, so 25%, up to 12,500. So that's again a bonus and really an incentive to you to not just implement one, but to implement many of the energy conservation measures that are identified. And then our implementation incentives. So our implementation incentives, as Andrew mentioned, are based on gigajoule savings over the measure life of an energy conservation measure uh, that is identified. So the measure life changes depending on the upgrade that you're making. And that's information that is available on our website. We have quite an extensive library of, of measures uh, that fit within the program or 75% of the project cost. So whatever is the lesser of those two values will be the incentive that you're offered on an energy conservation measure. And then we have some caps, uh, both for commercial programs and for industrial projects. So a $500,000 cap uh, for commercial and a $1 million cap for industrial. These caps are poor per energy conservation measure. Um, so there is the opportunity to go above and beyond that depending on the facility you have. So we'll quickly just run through what a typical life cycle of the custom efficiency program looks like. Uh, you'll get to spend two years with me, which is always lots of fun, um, really working on your building and making it more energy efficient. So as Andrew mentioned, up front, it's really about working with one of our approved consultants to identify what's available in your building and what the opportunities are. We have an application form that's easy to fill out and it's submitted to Fortis BC so we can review internally and our technical team can look at the energy conservation measures that you're exploring. Assuming that process goes well and we agree with your proposal, we'll set up a kickoff meeting and we'll give you an idea of what the process looks like over the course of the project and program. From there, we'll give you that approval to kickstart your energy study. Again, we'll cover 75% of that cost up to 37,500. From there, your approved consultant will complete their energy study. They have six months to do so. Once the approved consultant completes the energy study, they'll submit it for Fortis BC for internal review. We'll look at each ECM individually and we'll run a cost effectiveness test. So we really want to understand if that energy conservation measure is cost effective for Fortis BC, but also for the customer. So based on that cost effectiveness test, we identify energy conservation measures that we can uh, offer incentives on. And then we send you what's called a capital uh, implementation letter. Once you receive that letter, you have 18 months to complete implementation. We come out and do some checks and balances or at your site, and then we issue that capital incentive letter. It is a longer process than some of our other programs, but it allows you to look more detailed at a building and work with an energy consultant uh, in more detail on energy conservation measures. So that was a lot of information. So what I really encourage you to do is there's lots of great information on our website about uh, what are the, the guide and what we're looking for in terms of participants and buildings. Uh, what does an energy study look like? And what am I going to be receiving from our consultant? Uh, there's all sorts of great information on our website. And if I did pique your interest and you have a building in mind, please visit our website. 
uh, or contact us for more information and we'll be happy to help um, explain the program in more detail. I'll finish off by just uh, sharing uh, an example because I think um, it all exists on paper, but until you actually see an example, it doesn't really become real. So I chose this example from a local transit authority because for me, it really hits three big things. So first and foremost, this transit authority identified lots of really valuable energy conservation measures. Uh, so you see isolation valves, variable speed drives, infrared heater control, all things that were specific to their facility. The second thing that's really great is that it's custom to them. So they have a vehicle exhaust heat recovery system that they installed um, that they're able to save natural gas um, from installing this heat recovery system. So very custom to them, but we do have incentives for them based on what they're able to do in their specific facility. And then lastly, you can see there's some really terrific incentives available to that customer. So uh, by the end of it, there is over $300,000 in incentives available, and they also are seeing about $125,000 in savings per year. So a really terrific example of a project saves gas, there's electric savings, and there's a big save, uh, incentive for that project. So that's our custom efficiency program. But if you're just looking for one-to-one uh, -one upgrades uh, in your buildings, we have all sorts of other rebates available, uh, all on our website at fortisbc.com slash rebates. But here are some of the highlights that might be applicable to your buildings. Uh, things like natural gas boilers, uh, steam boilers, pipe insulation. Uh, we've got uh, condensing makeup uh, air units, natural gas water heat re rebates. And one thing that's really exciting that's uh, very uh, specific to Fortis BC is we have uh, gas absorption heat pump rebates. Um, so if that's a technology that's of interest to you, uh, please check out our website. We're one of their first utilities in North America to offer an incentive like this. Um, and it's a, a great incentive to be able to install a gas absorption heat pump. And then finally, I don't know if there's any developers in the audience, but we also have commercial new construction incentives. Uh, so depending on where you are in the province, we have some commercial new construction incentives. I encourage you to visit our website to get more information on that. So uh, as I mentioned, you can certainly uh, reach out through our custom efficiency program if you have questions. Uh, Kevin's uh, email is there. Um, Kevin supports some of uh, the sectors that are probably uh, present today, but we'd be happy to connect you with the correct key account manager at Fortis BC to kickstart a project um, if we're not the correct avenue. So with that, I'll probably turn it back over to Andrew uh, and we'll continue uh, talking about some of the other incentive programs that are available. So back to you, Andrew. Thanks, BJ. Um, so BJ gave a great summary of the Fortis program and I'll, I'll share a little bit about the Clean BC program, which is a similar kind of custom program uh, available for uh, clients looking at uh, more of an electrification kind of project rather than a gas conservation uh, project. So as I mentioned before, Clean BC is about fuel switching projects and using heat pumps in place of natural gas. Uh, and th this really comes down to uh, one piece of, of simple math uh, that I like to share. If you compare a gas boiler with a heat pump, a gas boiler being 95% efficient and heat pump being 300 or 350% efficient or with a COP of 3.5. If you were to service a similarly sized heating load for both of them, a gas boiler might use 105 megawatt hours worth of gas, where a heat pump uses 28 megawatt hours of electricity. And as you can see in this chart, uh, the, one of the big differences is the amount of GHG emissions emitted under the two. Of course, a gas boiler is uh, tied to the natural gas grid intensity which uh, is coming down as more and more renewable natural gas is uh, provided into the grid, but it just doesn't compare to how our clean our electricity is in BC. So as you can see, a heat pump offers about a 98% reduction in GHG emissions compared to what a natural gas boiler could do. And this is really the, the crux of what the Clean BC Custom Program is looking to implement, is find a building scale solution that helps deploy heat pumps to help decarbonize um, our province. Of course, heat pumps come in a variety of different options. There's air source heat pumps, 
uh, VRF air source hydronic systems that can be coupled with a, a heating water and chilled water system in a building or water source heat pumps that can do heat recovery from a source like geo exchange or building energy sharing uh, within a building. So lots of different <coughs> options for heat pump projects. I'll share as well a couple of case studies from, from our experience. Uh, the first one here is for uh, British Columbia Institute of Technology. Uh, this was their downtown campus. Um, They're in need of a new cooling system uh, for a growing data center within this building. The building was also uh, tied to the downtown Vancouver district steam system, which has a very high cost of energy compared to uh, natural gas or heat pump heating. So anything we could do to save steam purchases had a very good uh, payback for the client as far as energy cost savings. And as well, the owner, of course, was committed to reducing their GHG emissions uh, through this building uh, and through this project. Of course, the building doesn't have any natural gas boilers serviced by steam from the downtown steam system, but that being a natural gas fired system, it was eligible under the Clean BC program because of the carbon emission savings uh, that we were able to achieve. So this was a great project for a couple of reasons. Uh, we hit on a few sweet spots here. One is that the, there was a data center in this existing building uh, that was venting most of the waste heat out through the roof, not being recovered or reused. Fairly high cost of energy uh, because of that steam connection. And the owner was looking to do mechanical upgrades regardless, right? The data center was growing. There was a need for additional cooling capacity. So that's really the kind of project that's ideal for a lot of these custom studies is when you need to do something anyways, why not take advantage of one of these programs, do an energy study at the same time, and find the most efficient way um, to go about what you need. And that can apply whether it's like chiller replacements, spoiler upgrades, uh, adding cooling to a place where it wasn't uh, existing before or where there wasn't enough capacity. That can really be a sweet spot when you have a few needs that you can tick off with one program. Our solution here was to use high temperature heat pumps uh, to provide chilled water for the data center cooling systems and supply the heat into the building hydronic loop. Study funding and as well as a capital incentive was provided by Clean BC. And one other uh, case study, this was a Fortis uh, funded uh, project. Uh, this was an industrial uh, building in Langley. Um, a fabrication shop. They had an uninsulated metal building uh, or very little insulation. Um, and so we did an assessment of, of adding insulation into the building. It caused a few issues with uh, poor thermal comfort for workers working in the cold uh, environment. And so, and the owner was committed to reducing their greenhouse gas emissions uh, corporately. So we looked at a few energy conservation measures there, including adding insulation to the metal building a better control of radiant tube heater uh, with new control upgrades and uh, providing uh, an HRV for uh, a spray booth that they had, which used a large amount of uh, natural gas for preheating the makeup air. Uh, together, those had a really good payback. Um, I, don't, I can't share the specific figures because uh, it's uh, confidential with, with the client, but it was a, like a, a close to ha half a million dollars of rebate was available. Um, and it uh, covered nearly over 50% of the cost of the, um, of the implementation cost of the various energy conservation measures. So the point is that the, these programs can be very generous uh, in, in, in the right circumstances. So now I leave it over to you. Uh, those of you who are here with us, what could help you uh, in the operation of your buildings? Some things to consider, boiler replacements, as I, as I mentioned, you know, when it's time to replace old uh, equipment that's reached the end of its service life, it's a great time to look at uh, an energy efficient way, whether that's a like for like replacement or upgrade to a high efficiency condensing boiler, or maybe pairing it with controls upgrades. Bundling a few things together can be done under the custom program and can result in good paybacks and energy savings. Uh, heat recovery chiller. Um, also a great thing to look at as the time of uh, replacing existing chillers, or if you have a building with a four pipe uh, heating and chill water system, uh, there's a lot of value in adding a heat recovery chiller 
to do energy sharing between between those buildings. Uh, wastewater heat recovery is an option uh, in for is a great source of of, uh, of heat for decarbonization projects. Insulation upgrades uh, at the time of doing a roof membrane replacement is a good time to look at the insulation levels in the roof, uh, perhaps do an energy study and uh, assess an energy conservation measure of adding insulation at the same time doing the roof upgrades. Uh, heat recovery ventilators, uh, as I mentioned, more and more ventilation uh, these days in buildings. And so the business case for adding heat recovery um, is improving. Rooftop unit upgrades are something we see all the time. And if your rooftop unit looks like the one here in this photo, you probably need to give uh, give us a call, give an engineer a call because this needs replacement. When you're looking to replace those, it's a great time to consider uh, either higher efficiency units or replacing uh, gas fired equipment with heat pumps, which can do both heating and cooling efficiently uh, with a lot less carbon emissions. Hot water heater replacements are another Another time when it's good to look at um, uh, decarbonization and high efficiency options. <clears throat> and of course, it all starts with, with application. And as BJ mentioned, uh, Fortis has a, a workbook that you fill out. Uh, this is an example, check boxes of what kind of things you want to study, general description of the building and the potential energy conservation measures. This is the first step is getting in touch with your uh, key account manager or a trusted engineer provide some basic information of the site, describe the systems, and describe the conservation measures to be investigated. And a good engineer or a good key account manager uh, can help guide you through this process. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today and uh, be happy to take any questions if, um, if anybody has them. I think there's one question in the Q&A, and I think it's directed to BJ. Uh, regarding the transit of the local transit authority building uh what was the roa related to the local transit authority the basin and the base investment i guess and maybe maybe a vague answer rather than a specific answer i'll leave that with you bj yeah gosh i, I don't actually have that information uh in, in front of me but as andrew mentioned these projects it, it can be really cost effective and there could be lots of benefits and it can, can cover a significant portion of the cost of implementing. So okay. um, I, I wish I had a specific answer, but I don't have anything right. on that at one. I can share a little bit of a general, um, a little bit more general background. Um, some of the, we've done numerous ones of these studies and energy conservation measures can range from having a no payback to having a payback in the neighborhood of, um, well, you know, 10 years uh, or, or less sometimes. I mean, at BJ, I'm sure you've seen uh, ones that have payback of like two years or less. And that's often the case with, with smaller things like con simple controls upgrades or reprogramming and recommissioning can be very short paybacks indeed. But uh, for a lot of the projects that I've been involved with where we actually are doing like uh, equipment installation or equipment renewals, um, you know, paybacks in that, in the range of 10 to 20 years uh, prior to any incentive payments is, is not unusual. And it's especially true once you consider the effect of carbon tax on the price of natural gas. With gas where it is right now at $10 a gigajoule, it's still seen as a fairly cheap fuel source. But as the province stages in carbon taxes over the next uh, eight years, the price of $10 natural gas right now will actually be $20 a gigajoule uh, in 2030. So that takes that $100,000 gas bill that you're paying now, it'll be $200,000 in year 2030. And once you consider that, that reduces the payback even further. Question, BJ and Kevin, this is from me now, and it kind of picked up from the, from the, from the presentation. Is there a trend to the kind of applications you're getting just for people on the call that are considering their own situation? Is, there a, is, is, is the market telling you what industry, buildings, transit, transit facilities, <laughs> rooftops, are the uh, the things that you're seeing growing interest in? I can probably jump in and answer sure. uh, that question, John. I think we see such a range of different buildings uh, with just the nature of it being a custom program, uh, whether it be from hospitals, ice rinks, transit authorities, there's all sorts of different projects that fit within this bucket. So. Um, if there are people on the line that you that you think you don't fit in, uh, then 
then consider you, you still might, and there might be an opportunity for you within your facility when you're building. So um, we just don't get kind of one of a kind applications. It, it comes from all sorts of different sectors. Okay, thank you. I'd, I'd agree with that too, that I think the, this program is well suited for complicated situations and, and any type of building, whether it's industrial or mixed use residential, um, commercial, or uh, you know, rec recreation facilities, uh, schools. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different types of buildings that can qualify here. And in many cases with the custom program, the more uh, complicated the building, the better, right? Uh, different types of HVAC systems, finding ways to make them work together more efficiently, taking a whole building approach to, uh, to energy efficiency rather than just like a prescriptive boiler rebate might be most appropriate for a simple six story, uh, residential building that just needs a new boiler, right? Whereas the custom program is well suited for those mixed use and, and uh, industrial and uh, educational facilities. One more question. Um, thanks for the great presentation. These incentives are great to support planning and capital costs. They don't necessarily contemplate the hidden costs of operating costs such as BC hydro bills or sometimes deep retrofits are required and it triggers electrical upgrades hazmat abatement, et cetera. Do you help clients understand what the implications of ECM studies truly are in the long run? Maybe Andrew, you can yeah, touch I'll, on I'll that. I'll take one. that. I think, I think that's yeah. a good point that it's, uh, there's a lot to go into uh, implementing a project in, in some cases. In some cases, it's fairly straightforward, but in, in some cases there is um, added scopes, such as you mentioned, like has, uh, has abatements required if you're, removing all the asbestos laden insulation and, and stuff like that. I think having a good consultant can help guide you through that process uh, to identify the various uh, pitfalls or considerations. And those should be all considered in, in the energy study and the scope of work, right? If it's a boiler replacement project that you're considering, it's more than just buying the new boiler, right? It's the whole project cost um, needs to be included. So those are good questions to ask as you're going through the energy study process. And something we could help you with as well, clearly, because it's something we, we, we do a fair bit of. I thought I saw one more question. Maybe it's in the chat. It popped up and I can't see it. Oh, here you go. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. What is the estimated life expectancy for high temperature a ACHP domestic hot water? Presumably high pressure refrigeration with high temperature refrigerant has was more complicated. Yeah, I, I, I might actually have to look that up with Fortis, but I, I think 15 years would be a typical lifespan for a heat pump equipment, at least under the Clean BC program. I imagine Fortis's uh, typical lifespan is similar. So, so for you know, for example, like you may be considering what could be the actual capital incentive, right? So if a project was going to save a thousand gigajoules of gas per year. Three dollars a gigajoule. That's three thousand dollars rebate. But then you have to multiply by the lifespan of the equipment, which is fifteen years. So three thousand times fifteen years is forty-five thousand dollars. Kind of rebate for that type of project. Okay. That's where that number comes in. Okay, thank you. One more question from Aaron Berry. Hello, Aaron. Who I know. Uh, does review include impacts of to power factor surcharges and/or any adjustments to power commitments with hydro? Definitely, like that, that should be part of the factor. And um, yeah, commercial rates include both the demand charges and the consumption charges. So if you're electrifying equipment, you're adding to both, you're adding demand and consumption. And so, uh, yeah, that should be considered as part of an energy study is the, the impact on demand charges. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions. And I think we've had great participation today. I think it's been a great presentation. I think our questions have been well answered. I'd like to thank our, um, our uh, one more question from Aaron Berry, which I'll forward to you, Andrew, and you can answer to Aaron directly because we're wrapping up now. Um, I'd like to thank you all for participating, all the audience. There will be a questionnaire sent to you after this. If you could fill that out, it's pretty brief. It helps us do this better and bring you more information going forward. So please, um, Please uh, keep keep doing that. Keep um, keep keep attending. Keep sending us feedback. And if you have suggestions for more of these you'd like to see, I would very much appreciate seeing them. So in the meantime, thanks to presenters. Thanks to the back office staff for helping put this together, Charlene and Tiffany and Emma. And uh, we'll all see you on a future webinar. Thank you very much. Signing off. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.